Um, thanks for, for joining us today. Um, I hope that this is an informative talk. And like I said, feel free to stop and ask questions. Um, we I tend to do things very informally. Um, so today we're gonna talk about um, one of the ways to minimize stress in your animal studies to improve your data quality. Um, some of this will be an introduction into the translational pharmacology facility and then the machines that we use, which are the Kulex and the Kulex L. Um, they're both automated sampling systems. Um, so what is the one thing in life that completely affects us on multiple levels? Well, it can affect us emotionally, it can affect us physiologically, and it can also be beneficial or detrimental depending on um, the type of process that we run into. Um, well, that one thing in life is stress. So you can see here in some of these animal models that these are typically stressed out animals. I mean, most of us who work with um, rats tend to see the pore from staining, um, dogs panting and shivering in the corner or, or stressed out. Sheep, when they get a little overwhelmed, can tend to pant or breathe heavily. Um, we also have like pain scoring levels where mice look really droopy. And one of the ways for pigs, especially is tear staining. Um, they, they do do some tear staining um, when they are highly stressed. Harder to see in some of the mini pig breeds, depending on what color they are. Um, but this is a, a common thing. And then of course there's us um, and we tend to put our stress on the animals as well. Um, so the act of collecting a sample often changes its composition. So for example, if you're sampling blood from people, I, my daughter being one, um, she's 11 and has massive responses to needles, um, it can greatly increase the HPA stress response. And this doesn't just increase your sample response by like a little bit, this is like tenfold it affects your samples. So it has a huge effect on like the catecholamines, glucose and the corticosteroids. Um, so one things that we try to do is we try our best to decrease the stress because, you know, kind of like the happy cows equals better milk product in California. Well, happy animals inque increase your high quality um, data. So here at the Purdue Translational Pharmacology Facility, we use the Kulex and the Kulex L um, to do automated blood sampling from our animals. We're located at the College of Veterinary Medicine. Um, we have four units for swine and 12 units for rodents. Um, they're used for commercial and academic opportunities as well as pilot studies and full scale studies. Um, they can be used in a lot of different um, arrangements and I'll show more about that later. So what is the Kulex? The Kulex has been available since uh, commercially since 1999. Um, it's a system that can automatically collect bile, blood, metabolites, dialysates, and more from awake and freely moving animals, as well as you know anything from as small as mice to swine. Um, the system is used actually in nine of the world's top 10 pharma companies, universities, and contract research organizations. Um, I personally have worked with this system for well over 20 years. I used to work for the company that developed it and then brought it here to the university. So the Kulex family, um, there's several options, several arrangements. There's this small standalone unit that's like a bench top unit that uses a liquid swivel. Um, this can be, uh, it's not as versatile as some of the bigger systems, but can be used specifically for blood or maybe dialysate. Um, this is a large animal bench top system that could be hooked up to like primates that are already in their cage through a swivel system. Um, the tubing set works just the same. The units that we currently have here in translational pharmacology are this four station unit which can do a multiple combination of things. And I can go over that further. And then this large swine unit, um, which also uh, can you be used for multiple projects. So why would we automate? Well, as trained technicians and veterinarians or even researchers, we do everything within our power really to minimize the stress on the animals. We put a lot of work into enrichment and environment 
but still there's the restraint that we have to do in order to get the blood that we need. Animals tend to, you know, really panic with restraint. Pigs are terrible with restraint um, unless they're trained. So you take a lot of time to have to train them to get them where you need them to be. There's repeated needle sticks unless you use a catheter. Um, they can overheat from, from stressing out. Um, there's olfactory simulation. Um, then there's effects of anesthesia. Um, isoflurane is a pretty commonly used uh, anesthesia for rodents, but that actually can affect glucose for well up to 24 hours. So it's something that you kind of have to consider when you're using your anesthesia also for your blood sampling. Um, and then there's just excessive blood loss because technicians don't always take into account when they pull blood from animals that that needle hub actually holds like 50 microliters and adds to your sample volume. And sometimes people don't think that about that when they're considering how much blood they need to take from their animals at a time. So that actually adds into your um, total volume pulled. Another reason for us to automate is you can have minimal handling. So you don't really have to touch the animals for any type of sampling or dosing if you set the systems up correctly. Um, it reduces the stress. The animals are freely moving. They're allowed to do what they want. Um, it can be programmed to collect a specific amount of blood. So there's low volumes and low waste. Um, they are also given replacement fluids through this system. So for every you know, microliter of blood you take, they actually get a microliter flush back. Um, plus then they are tended over the course of the time that they're on the systems. So kind of like a bartender tends to its clients at the bar, this machine tends to its patients. So it adds in um, blood or it adds in saline every 12 minutes up to one mil at a time. Um, they have free access to food and water and then it's painless in the, in the grand scheme of things when the blood is drawn, the animals really have no idea that it's happening. Um, so they're usually catheterized for this, but, but otherwise they, they have no trouble with that. Um, another reason to automate is because you can do more data with fewer animals. You can do a lot of different crossover designs. Um, you also have the ability to do night dosing. If you have a pump that you can automate and dose at night, which would actually be maybe during the diurnal sample uh, time periods for your animals. Um, multiple data stream collections. So maybe you wanna collect with telemetry or you wanna collect with um, other options as far as blood pressure or heart rate, or you wanna collect microdialysate and blood at the same time. You can program the systems to do that. Um, and then there's greater effect technician efficiency. If the machines are doing all of the work, your technicians are available to do things that are also needed for projects like labeling vials or analyzing data. And it's a faster throughput. Um, once you get the animals put on, you program it, you go, and there's not a lot of time taken to, to have to mess with the animals. Um, this is a video that I have of the pigs on the Kulex L. Um, it will kind of drone on talking about the system, um, but it's the best video I have. But you will see that um, the pigs are allowed to basically be freely moving in this system. Um, they are catheterized in the jugular vein, and then basically we program um, the system to take blood to from them. The genetic from metabolism and substances affected by stress hormones. The key to automated sampling from awake and freely moving animals is the movement response pen. The pen prevents twisting and tangling of tubing and leads connecting the moving animal to stationary instruments outside the pen. The counter-rotating pen was developed to overcome the cross-contamination, cleaning, and sterilization limitations of liquid swivels. It enables multiple contiguous connections from moving animals to stationary instruments with complete separation of drug administration and bloodlines eliminating potential leakage of administration substances into collected blood as can happen inside multi-channel liquid swivels. Additional fluid lines can be used for bile sampling, microdialysis, or sampling blood from multiple locations. An additional benefit of the movement responsive pen is that it automatically records animal activity. 
Direction and duration of pen rotation is recorded and provided as part of the blood collection report. This enables the researchers to get an indication if the test article produces neurological or behavioral effects by comparing animal activity before and after dosing. At the program time point, blood is drawn from the animal. Blood samples are taken without the animal noticing. Samples can be taken while the animal is engaged in any activity. So I, that pig actually was fitted with ECG leads as well as blood sampling equipment. And you can tell he basically just had no clue what was going on. And we just kind of hung out and, and videoed and he was having a great time. Um, it's, it's probably one of my favorite things about the unit is because they're not stressed out. They really, really like them, you know, being hung out. So we've done some studies on this. Um, we've compared uh, a comparison of manual sampling to the pig turn sampling to um, pigs being in the pig turn with their buddies being held and sampled from. So basically in the V trough, um, at the same time point that the blood was being drawn. Um, you can actually see that the undisturbed automated um, cortisol levels actually remained much lower than the pigs that were drawn from manually. I guess I should put my pointer back on. So you can see here that these were the manual samples taken and these were the samples taken by the Culex L itself. And then these samples here, these guys stayed pretty low, except for right in here. They really didn't care as long as nobody had a hold of them. Um, their samples actually stayed pretty well. Um, so we looked at cortisol and norepinephrine for this study. So you can see here is um, also a comparison of the norepinephrine of the automated versus the manual sampling. Um, to just kind of get an idea that the difference is, is basically the less handling, the better off they are. Um, another comparison study we did, oh, doesn't want to, is recovery in, we call this Culex L the pig turn affectionately because obviously they turn. Um, because we looked, we started noticing when we did surgery on the animals and we let them recover in the pig turn itself, not necessarily turned on, but just in the pen itself, that they seem to be much less stressed than waking up in their home pen. Um, so we thought we would test this out and, and get an idea if this was truly real or just something that we were making up. Um, and we actually found that if the pigs went into their home pen first and then went into the pig turn, um, their, their levels were higher, but if they started off in the pig turn and then went to their home pen, they, they stayed, um, relatively the same. So in the, in the pig turn, their stress levels were much lower. And the only thing that we can come up with is that the, the pen is novel. Um, it is something new, so it coaxes their interest. And so instead of being fearful and stressed out, um, they tend to wake up and be really nosy and, and walking around trying to figure out, oh, hey, what's going on here? Uh, that's really, the, without being able to ask them in the answer, that's the only way I can come up with a solution for that. Um, in rats, we did the same thing. Um, basically, tail vein bleeding versus home caged um, rats or in the automated sampling system. And you can see that the tail bleed rats were higher in almost all of the hormone levels that we tested, um, ACTH, corticosterone, insulin, and prolactin. Um, the automated sampling rats were always much lower. And even in comparison to like being sampled outside of their home cage. And again, we aren't sure why. We think it's just that the novelty of the environment um, depending on the caging system too for the Culex, we do have some that offers a lot of extra bedding. And sometimes those rats just burrow down and they hang out and have no idea that anybody's even outside the cage. Um, we've looked at, this is kind of an interesting concept too. Uh, we do 
basically automated dosing from outside the cage. So for rats, instead of gavaging, we may put in a gastric catheter, um, put it directly into the stomach or into the duodenum, depending on where you wanna dose. We allow um, the animals to recover. And then once they've recovered, we put them on the systems and we will either program a pump or stand outside of the kennel or cage and do the dosing um, from outside the cage with a syringe and like a long line. Um, we actually did a project for an outside client that had done the testing on their compound at a previous facility and we were told that it was not toxic. And I asked them about doing it this way and they were fine with that. When I did it this way, um, over 50% of the animals died. Um, it turns out the absorption rate was much quicker this way because if you think about it, um, when you stress your rats out for, for oral dosing, you kind of have that fight or flight syndrome going on. So all of the blood runs to the extremities and away from the gut. So the absorption rate in the gut is much slower. So by doing this this way, um, the absorption is much quicker. So as you can see here with um, this nicotine that we dosed, uh, the absorption and the uptake was much quicker with the nicotine with the automated dosing um, versus manually dosing with gavage. Um, another thing to consider is your clearance time um, with some of these things. So carbamazepine, codeine, propionolol, all of them um, with the Kulex actually had a much higher clearance versus animals that were done manually. Uh, basically, you're still stressing them out, so it's still not flowing as well as it should be because it's not absorbing the way you want it to. So those are more things to kind of consider when you're doing your studies is how much stress are you, are you adding? Um, there's also with this system, a reduction in animal variability. Um, you can see here that we have dosed basically the same mouse um, once and then a repeat dose the next time. Um, basically the dose was repeated twice in the same day. And you can see that basically the animals are different, but the doses were absorbed the same. So you have your animal variability between the two, but between your doses, it's very consistent. So that really helps also in reducing your animal numbers because you know that when you're doing a repeat dose that you're able to um, keep that kind of the same within the same animals. So there's endless possibilities also with this system. Um, I, I truly, like I said, I've worked with this machine now well over 20 years. And, and I truly believe that anything that you think of, we can come up with a design or a way to do it. Um, I've done a lot of stuff for a lot of different people that I always think to myself, oh, I, I don't know, but we're gonna try it. So there's stress fee evaluations of behaviors. Obviously um, you heard in the little video that I had that the rotational activity behavior data is also something that we can collect. It's kind of a pain to analyze because there's a lot of it. Um, but it can show if your drugs have an activation or depression mechanism. Um, it's basically if they may have a preferred direction of rotation, um, depending on what the stimulant is. Um, it can also test their circadian rhythms. So maybe they're a little more active at night than they are during the day. And it also looks at neurochemical effects for anything that crosses the blood brain barrier. Um, I had a study where we had a pig, a project that just kept going in the same direction all the time. Like he would barely stop and then he would just continue to walk again. And it turns out that whatever we had given him had caused him to have a bit of a stroke. And he basically could not figure out how to turn the opposite direction. Um, so that was kind of a, an interesting thing to learn by using this system. Um, you can look obviously at pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic data. Um, you can do comparisons of formulations, generic versus your market formulations, um, complete bioavailability with IV and PO crossover studies. Um, these are triple cannulated mice. I don't do these much anymore, but we can order them this way. 
um, to basically do a gastric dose or an IV dose and then collect blood at the same time. Um, mice obviously are preferred by people who have very few, uh, very limited amount of compound. Um, rats are a little more my preference, but I did all of the development work on the mouse catheters. So it's just been a while since we've done as many mice on the systems as we used to. Um, you can get multiple parameters from one animal. You can get a full data set. So this mouse here has a carotid catheter for blood sampling, a jugular catheter for venous administration, and a microdialysis probe into the brain to look at um, concentrations within a specific area of the brain. Um, so we can look and see if the drug is crossing the blood-brain barrier. Um, there's also the ability to do first pass metabolism data um, on this system with rats. I Obviously that's not a good plan for mice, they're too small, but you can do that in rats. Um, there's also opportunities for physiological data. Um, we can do telemetry. I do not have the telemetry devices here, but if someone has a device that they want to use in the setup, we can hook that up to our system. Um, where we can do ECG blood pressure, body temperature. We can do external ECG leads. Um, I've also done some pills that basically read pH of the gastric system. And, you know, it goes from the stomach into the intestines so the uh, pH changes. Um, and we've had some, some interesting data from that as well. So, so a lot of different physiological data can be taken from these animals. Um, and because we're associated with the College of Veterinary Medicine here, um, there's a lot of different surgical models that we can come up with and do some imaging as well. Um, so we can do CT scans or MRIs and do collection of various tissues and fluids, microdialysis aids and intraperitoneal. This particular pig here, um, the group that we were doing this study for was um, studying a specific disease state that is only in like 500 people a year um, worldwide, um, but they had a medication that they were hoping would fix this. So this particular pig is actually cannulated with these cannulas into the stomach and to, into the um, ileum, I believe is correct. And we would take blood at a specific time point and then we would go in and we would unscrew these little caps and we would take like stomach collections or, or collection from the ileum to look at um, the drug and the metabolites in the system as it was going through the pigs. So um, in acknowledgments, I, the USDA has contributed to several of these studies. Um, they use the systems a lot to look at hormones and stress and behaviors. Um, so they, they have contributed a lot in the last several years. Um, BASI, which is Bioanalytical Systems, is the company who developed the Kulex systems. And then Purdue University, obviously the College of Veterinary Medicine helps extensively with um, any of our surgical models or any of our imaging. And then Bindley Biosciences is actually the, the center that covers um, the translational pharmacology facility. Um, I am willing to take whatever questions you have. I feel like I kind of sped through that. So any, any questions at all? <laughs> Robin, if I can maybe just, maybe you could talk a little bit about, you know, how people um, should contact you or rates or uh, how you charge or how do you, is it collaborative or grant funded or, you know. Um, we, we do both um, collaborative and grant funded projects. Um, usually people would email me and talk to me about what they're hoping to do. Uh, the machines can be expensive to use. And so I do not, if you are doing something quick and dirty, like a, just a quick and dirty dose and see where the drug is, what it is doing. We also will do quick and dirty pharmacokinetic studies without the machines. Um, those, I understand when people have limited compound, they just don't want to go into a full study. 
Um, but usually if you contact me, we can discuss study design. We can kind of come up with the best way for it to run. Um, the machines run around $1,000 to use all 12 stations um, for any period of time. Uh, catheters in rodents, typically that's for the rodent system. Typically the catheters in the rodents don't usually last past seven to 14 days. I really don't like to have rats in the system longer than seven days if I can help it. I do, depending on the study type. And in my opinion, if it's for metabolism, I would prefer they not be in that long, uh, just because we have to do a wire bottom cage to collect urine and feces. And that's a little harder on them than, than one of the cages with the bedding. Um, I prefer to, to make them as comfortable as possible. The pig units, um, we have four and they're around $600 um, to use them and then plus the equipment. So $600 each to use them, plus the tubing sets and supplies. Um, and then it's usually about the cost of the pig, which depending on what type of project you're looking at. So we do a lot of pilot work here. Uh, people usually, again, don't have large amounts of compound to test. So we do order a lot of pigs from the Purdue farm and they are around like $150. So they're really cheap. Um, but it, we've also done some uh, autonogenic studies where we've ordered piglets that are from um, a, like a mini pig line and then drawn blood from them for one week taken them off the systems, come back in a, about four weeks, taken blood off of them again, and then kept them a little longer and maybe done some of those samples manually um, just to look at growth and, and things like that. Um, mini pigs tend to grow a lot slower than commercial swine. Um, so we do a lot of pediatric testing here for the College of Pharmacy. Um, we have a lot of people who are changing the formulations for stability or absorption for children in Africa. Uh, one of our favorite projects was to uh, use rifampicin and turn it into a fast melt strip or a quick dissolving tablet um, so that it was easily stable and we knew exactly what the dose would be for children. Um, at the time, kids were basically taking rifampin by squishing it up and putting it in applesauce. And they really had no concept of what or how much they were getting. And it was affecting some of the kids' HIV compounds because there was like a, a counter balance between that. Um, some of the other projects that we do, I mean, if you come to me and you have an idea, I can typically find a way to make it work. Um, I. I'm really good at the whole, we MacGyver a lot of things as universities do, um, but we can typically sit down, especially if it's a surgical model, I sit down with a lot of our surgeons here at the vet school and we'll come up with something. Uh, we'll, we'll find a way to make things work out. Um, and if, if I can't do it, I, I will find someone to help. Um, Dr. Greg Nip here at the university with the industrial pharmacy helps with our pharmacokinetic analysis. Um, there is a fee to use him. Uh, it's an hourly rate. I believe it's $58 an hour, or maybe it's a little bit more than that. And then for my time, it's usually like $49 an hour. It's an hourly rate, um, but I can, because the machine does so much of it, I really only, other than the surgical day, do, you know, I'm there for a couple of hours here and a couple of hours there collecting samples. The samples are collected into a fraction collector, which is kept at minus four. No, yeah, it's kept at four degrees C. And so everything is kept cold. So if you know that your compound's stable in plasma or serum, we can just collect at the end of the day and spin it all down and put it in the minus 80. And we can either send it here for analysis or we can ship it down to IU or wherever somebody wants it done. Great, Is, does anyone have any questions? I can 
contact me anytime you have a question. Um, I'm happy to talk about these systems. Obviously, um, I, I, with the help of some other PIs, brought this system to the university um, 11 years ago. And again, I've worked with it 20 years, so I'm very passionate about the system. Um, and, and again, I always look forward to new ideas to, to uh, bring to the table. All right, well, thank you again, Robin. I think this is really Absolutely. informative and a very unique um, uh, service that, that you guys offer there. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you everyone.